You know what, uh, what month it still happens to be? Epic April. Yeah, right. Somebody get that lady a stuffed pony. Yeah. If you guessed correctly, you can trade it up. Very exciting. Yes. On the show today, we'll be revealing Halo Reach beta codes to the first, really, and you could be the first to play the game. It's a new Halo game, everybody. Yeah. yeah. That's right. You watch this program very, very closely. Then Weston Scott and Sarah Underwood try to escape from a mock kidnapping. Yeah. Oh. At least that's what we told them when our plan to kidnap them failed. <laughs> Plus, on Gadgetron, we've got a Panasonic 3D Plasma HDTV. Right. Could this be the best 3D charity on the market? Oh, we'll tell you. And you'll see a Star Wars-themed charity car wash. Yeah. Fun fact, Wookiees can also be used as large sponges. Yes. I think everybody knew that, though. Know that. Common knowledge. This week, the internet was alive with the sounds of failing. From a neutered pole vaulter to a basketball game that ended with a twist, we're going to see it all around the net. All right, Zipper Ninja. <laughs> and at number five today, pole vaulting has always been an integral part of the track and field experience, yes? Yes, it can also make you sterile. That's gotta hurt. I believe That's... many poles were bent in that video. <laughs> Man, it would, you know what? Right now, it'd be actually re really nice if we had like a sad bugler you know, in the house who could just play taps for that man. <laughs> you know, for that'd his be really junk? nice. Just like, like oh. 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 Oh, that is. Oh, that's beautiful. That is really sad. That is no, really nice. No, it's not. It's not. Yes, it's not it is. Sad. It's very sweet. Oh. What, what are you doing, Kim? What are you doing? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Ah, taste it. Oh. Taste it. Oh. Uh, yeah, breathe with it. Breathe with it. Just breathe through it. Let it go. Just let it go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Today's number one item actually stars one of gaming's most recognizable armored heroes, Master Chief. Yeah. Yeah. And up until now, we've really only seen the side of Chief that wants to kill and maim hostile alien life forms. But in this new commercial, Chief tries to just loosen up a bit. Yeah, maybe make a quick buck. I mean, why not, right? Right? Mm -hmm. His space adventures have touched the heart of a generation. Now, experience Master Chief like never before. One more snipe. Give me one more snipe. Waverly Records presents Master Chief Sings. Master Chief sings today. It's okay, I love it. Okay. Hello. Not one T-Bag song, really? I love it. Hmm. <laughs> but that, that's so, wait, so Master Chief's true identity then is <clears throat> Phil Collins. <laughs> really? What's, what's the problem? Well, I, I mean, I guess it makes sense. I just didn't, I, I didn't know. Really? You have a problem with that? Wow. wow. You know, you know, Kevin, if you can actually think of a better soundtrack for defending humanity against an aggressive confederation of theocratic aliens than a mid-tempo synth-pop mega-hit of Phil Collins, I'd like to hear it! Yeah. <laughs> Today's number three item is a fantastic play from the game of Hooper Ball. Oh. <laughs> Basketball. Yeah. All right. Okay. You, so, tomato, yes. tomato. Right. Okay. It's all, a, it's all a game. It's really? all a game. Really Win in Rome. <laughs> okay. Again, that doesn't... Yeah. Okay. So this recent European match was between the best teams of Croatia and Serbia. Now, if you don't know much about basketball... And let's just assume that they don't, just for their sake. Just for the kids at home. Just throw it out there. Okay, Kev? Just assume that. Um, if you don't know much about basketball... If they don't know much about basketball... <laughs> okay. Well, I want you guys to know this. Do not start celebrating a victory until the clock has completely run out. Uh -huh. So, I've seen in a really long time. I love the 
coach is literally on the court. I and boom. love it. So That's the good. Best. Hey, and that is why Europeans will never be good at basketball. USA, number one. Yeah. What, why don't you stick to cricket and curling, Europe? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In at number two, fishing. Yeah, someone, someone just made a big catch. A uh, hint. It's not who you think. Right here. Yep. Yep. As far as you can reel, so it is. Angle up towards me. There we go. Nice. Whoa! Oh, you son of a bitch! Oh. 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 A sea cow is actually a more accurate insult. Yeah. Stop it! We have a fried thief in the studio! That was gonna make the bit, and now the kids at home will never see the french fries that we were going to use in that comedy, Brian Terwilliger. Oh, yeah. And and they're, and, yeah. they're, and they're also my french fries, and I want to You know what? Them. Let it be time of death. Someone just killed Epic April, and that's someone's Brian Terwilliger. Oh. And I know the viewers at home are like, who the F and who the what? I, whatever. Just know in this studio, big deal. Big deal. <laughs> just happened. No! <laughs> <laughs> uh, you really did ruin everything. No, we didn't. You're the Today's best. Today's number one item. <laughs> it's you. one of the best mashups we've seen in a very long time. Yeah, it's actually called Dude Vader, and it combines one of film's most intimidating villains with one of film's most endearing stoner pacifists. <laughs> yes. Witness the genius combination of Star Wars A New Hope and The Big Lebowski. Darth Vader, only you could be so bold. The Imperial Senate will not sit still for this. When they hear you've attacked a diplomat... Oh, wait, wait let, me, let me explain something to you. Uh, I'm the dude. So that's what you call me, you know? Uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or... I don't know what you're talking about. Holding her is dangerous. Word of this gets out. It could generate sympathy for the rebellion in the Senate. Uh, well, I think it's easy money, you know. It's all pretty harmless. She probably kidnapped herself. She'll die before she'll tell you anything. My ex-wife asked me to take care of her dog while she went to Honolulu. I told her to so. Lord Vader, Dude. battle station plans are not aboard this ship. Bummer. And no transmissions were made. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. <laughs> I literally just reminded me we have to get uh, back to the Skywalker Ranch. Uh, uh, I, I actually don't know what you're talking about. I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to, but I don't know, because we already shot that. We were in San no, no, Francisco. No, 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 let's talk more walkie. We got to get up there. Let's go. Land speeder. Come on. No! Let's go. Oh! Come on. <laughs> get in. Come, 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 come. Okay, that has nothing to do with this bit. Put him down. I don't know why Brian put those there. No, we gotta get to the Skywalker Ranch. Got it. Why are they wet? What? Wait. This thing is fast. Well, it's a land speeder. I mean, speed's in the name of it. So we, get it. Just your brother. You shoot. I'm driving. You shoot. I'm driving. Get it. Get it. Get it. It's not working. <laughs> it's not working. You gotta make the laser noises. Is it the... Really? Like pew, pew, pew. Yeah. Oh, you got him. There he goes. Oh. Good thing. Yeah. Pretty. Where are we? Oklahoma? Huh? We I don't know. I just turned left. Here we go. Let me get us out of here. Oh, this is Maybe. a lot of fun. You know, it's actually it's probably more fun doing this and flying up to San Francisco. Uh, uh well, you know, this is a this is oh, one way to get there. Oh my god, no, 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 don't shoot! Oh, I got you! I got you! Did you just shoot an old woman? Stop shooting an old woman! She entered, there's no reason to shoot her. Did shoot an old woman? Why did you shoot her? She I was just hanging out. shoot an old woman! She she shot first? <laughs> with, with, her, with her bag of groceries? She shot you with her bag of groceries. Oh, yeah. Well, she might be okay. Well, oh, these, these guns have like a stun setting, right? I was on stun yeah, setting. Yeah, that's, that's Star Trek, sweetheart. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Why don't you have another french fry? You're fine. Oh! Go on down, Kurt! I what? gotta There's go! No have fun! <laughs> Biggest month of the year rolls on when we once again try to kill Weston Scott and Sarah Underwood. Bring 
you more of the torrid romance between our resident badasses, Sarah Underwood and Weston Scott, who find themselves drawn together. Actually, well, they're more bound together with restraints, but they're together. together. <laughs> For the kids. In the wake of a natural disaster, say social order broke down, would you be able to survive and could you defend yourself? We've learned from the experts at On Point Tactical how to pick locks and escape restraints in high stress situations. Now it's time to use our training in an actual urban escape scenario. Our first challenge, getting kidnapped and resisting interrogation, which included being bound, hooded and tasered. All right, Weston, where's your picks? I don't have any. Give me something. Tell him! What do you think, Kelly? Ah, let go! There we go. Cooperation. Just hope you're not in the van when we get back. Look at this. She's an ace. And they are off. The chase begins. For our next challenge, escape and evasion. Let's get rid of our stuff. Okay. We actually have two search teams already out looking for these guys. The hunt is on. Okay, so far, I haven't seen anybody following us through residential. Red t shirt, yeah. Where? Dark hair. He was right there at that bus sign right there, so he's gone now. All right. Hello, trackers. All right, we're on. Uh, Come on, let's get to get them. <laughs> So we are running right now like crazy. Uh, we have spotted. They're driving around. They know we're right here. They've seen us in these clothes. Yeah. Let's go. Just come across. Let's go. See him? Nope. But I'm going to go back into the alley here. There's an alley back there that. They probably would have gone into. Our next challenge, escape and evasion. I hope my disguise is good enough. Very good. Very good. Travel miles on foot undetected, locate our contact, and acquire intel for extraction. If we get caught, we have to start all over again. Here's the instructions he told me to get you. Finally, we had to use lock picking skills to obtain the location of our extraction point. Nice work. You did it faster than me that time. Yes, I did. Let that be noted. Blue car, blue car, blue car, blue car. Right there, go. Let's go. <laughs> Gentlemen. Well, well, well. Hey, guys. Gentlemen. I felt like the cat and the mouse game, the whole thing. I felt like you were toying with us. Anytime you could have smacked us. You guys did a great job. Thank you. I and mean, we've learned so much. We've been kidnapped. He was tasered. tasered. We're tired. I'm exhausted. The course is over. Our yeah. day's done. We're going to go commandeer some food. Oh, yeah. So, uh. I just want to check something real quick. Yeah. Our, our producers are cool with tasering the talents. Yeah, why do you think I'm so well behaved all the time? <laughs> this is well behaved? Yeah. <laughs> Can we get a stronger taser? No. Oh, we're fine. Oh, we're uh, oh there it is. There it is. There, what, there. There, there. Okay, code. Get it. I hope you got it. I hope you got it. It's fine. That's right. It was so quick. Quick. Okay. okay. There's more. Don't worry. There's okay. More. Okay. Got it. Oh, no, that wasn't a code. That was oh. paperclip. Did I make something happen? Oh? 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 No, nothing happened. No, nothing happened A at butterfly! All. Yay, still ahead. We've got a 3D TV on Gadget Prime, everybody. It's the future. Yes, and later, this guy sits down with the head of Lucasfilm's Industrial Light and Magic. Plus, George Lucas tells us what he really thinks about 3D films. But first... Do you think Kevin had a few guest spots on the final season of 24? Yes, I did. Unfortunately, they all ended up on the cutting room floor. Why? Why? Uh, too awesome. The following takes place between 4 p.m. and 4.02 p.m. Kevin, you'll have to act fast to deactivate the bioweapon. Would you relax? Katie Sackoff? I've got like an hour. You have less than a minute. What are you talking about? This weekend was fall back. Kevin, you're an hour off and daylight savings is back in September. You idiot, it wasn't fall back. Negative, Katie Sackoff, I will not fall back. The poison's released in seconds. Use the rebreather that I gave you. Oh, I left that thing in the van. What are you talking about? You know how heavy that thing is? And it didn't even have a touchscreen. You believe that? 
I, I was all around CES. Every single rebreather had a touchscreen. But did mine? No. Stays in the van. Are you kidding? Okay, Kevin. How long can you hold your breath? Kevin. If you guys want to know all about Star Wars, there's really only one place to go. Of course, it's Skywalker Ranch. Yes, unfortunately, you can't just, you know, drive up and buy a ticket, you know. It's kind of like the Illuminati. You have to be invited. Yes. And Kevin was there recently and got to talk with some of the head effects gurus at Industrial Light and Magic, including... Oscar winner Dennis Murin and George Lucas himself. All I had to do was give him a vial of my blood and my firstborn son. And you know what? You never loved him anyways. Yep. Here at ILM, they've been making movie magic for over 30 years. And just walking around, you know, oh my god, that's awesome. Oh yeah. Can you take a photo? I mean, it's Darth Vader. <laughs> give me one. It's fine. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dennis Murin. Uh, he's the VFX supervisor for ILM. The job on Star Wars at the time, you thought this was going to be just a year, a little freelance gig, you hop on, do some effects? It was much worse than that because there was literally no work. There was no interest in effects. There was no industry in it. There had been 10 years before in the big studio. It was, you know, it was a rare opportunity to even to work with a famous director, a real skilled director who was, you know, under 50 years old and wanted to do an effects film. So I thought, well, I'll just I'll see what George is like. And lo and behold, after it came out, everybody wanted to see it. What was the purpose of forming ILM? George went around and talked to some people in LA about doing the Star Wars. The couple of effects companies that were still around thought it was too big and, and didn't want to deal with it. So ILM was set up to do the Star Wars film and really without the idea of it ever if it was going to go over or not. Sure. Obviously the effects blew everybody away, the movie's a huge success. And then George uh, decided to do another Star Wars and we moved up here to Northern California. <laughs> Empire was one of the most difficult films that I've worked on, and one of the things we had done in that that was beyond what had been done was the big snow battle. And we used techniques that had been done before, stop motion animation, but did them in a way that was more advanced, with a lot of like very fluid camera movements. And we had these vast landscapes that were massive paintings that had been done for a sense of atmosphere and haze that really hadn't been done much before. What about something like Terminator 2, where, where Cameron says, I want the enemy to be made of liquid? There was a big step forward to be able to do T2. George, I mean, early on recognized the advantage of computer graphics. But for T2, we managed to get the models made in the computer as well as composited with the backgrounds in the computer. And what that meant is, not only do they have the shape-changing chrome guy, he was reflecting the environment around him. It was seamless. And the audience was just kind of stunned by it. What would you say the next landmark in CG was after that? Well, after that was Jurassic Park. Something that had not been done is that we hadn't really created something like us, a living creature. And that's what Jurassic was asking for. Are we going to get to the point in five years from now where the entire scene is just that? You know, I think the big breakthrough on that was probably George and Phantom Menace, where so much of that was a green screen film, and that was just beyond what anybody was even thinking. It took the rest of the world three or four years to catch up to try to do it, and then many other films have been made that way since. Where do we go from here? Really, what, what is the next step? Something that I, that I really like that's starting right now is 3D, the idea of, of seeing movie in depth. So you'd be able to, to think of effects spatially in a cube, I think has a great opportunity for storytelling. But what about 3D in the Star Wars universe? Well, we turn to the man himself, George Lucas, to find out. 3D is now a factor in making movies. I think in terms of special effects films, it's helped quite a bit. The thing I was always struggling with in making movies that are, you know, at least 50% not real uh, in terms of their CG and not real characters like Yoda. It's very hard to make them real in a 3D space. We made Yoda as a 3D puppet who walked around the set, but he was a real thing. You could see that it was a real thing. When we went to the CG version of Yoda, even though he looked better 
no matter how you did it, he was still something that was pasted onto the movie, as all special effects are. And it was very hard to get that sense of reality about him that the puppet had. Once you put those in 3D, which is an avatar, you really get a sense that that person is real. And that, I think more than anything, helped create a reality for Avatar that we weren't able to achieve in the Star Wars films. I have had an incredible time here at ILM. I can't wait to come back in 2030 and see what they've got cooking then. Thanks, Chu. Appreciate it. You know, when conventions pop up around the country, there really is only one, one coverage team with the skills to tackle the toughest show floor layouts. That's our viewer army, everybody. Viewer army! Here is Andre at the Chicago Entertainment Expo. Hey, what's up, Attack of the Show? My name is Andre Walker. I'm here at the C2E2, or the Chicago Comic Entertainment Expo. Let's go inside and see what they got. What brings you to the C2E2? Um, well, I'm in a college tech club, okay. so we came here for kind of like a field trip. What's the coolest thing you've seen so far here today? Actually, I guess all the people dressed up, a lot of entertainment and stuff. You see all these people dressed up in these elaborate costumes, and it's just mind-boggling. What would you guys tell me what you got here for us today? One of my new personal favorites is Superman vs. Muhammad Ali, based on the 79 comic by Neil Adams. It's a fabulous piece. As you go around the side, you'll see our women of the DCU, which the fans really love. Well, Unbound Saga is coming out on Xbox Live Arcade. It's based on the comic book that we put up from Dark Horse last year. In the game, you kind of go off on this twisted Wizard of Oz journey to escape the comic and confront the maker. What's been the biggest games people have been coming by to see at the Nintendo booth? Uh, today it's definitely been WarioWare DIY and then Photo Dojo. Basically what you do is you take pictures of people in like 13 different poses, fighting poses, and then you add in your own sound effects and you create your own fighters, and then you fight them against each other. That's the end of the C2E2, the very first one in Chicago. This is Andre Walker signing off. Freaking electronics? How do they work? Yeah. Right? And shut up, scientists, because we get our answers from Gadget Prawn. All right. All week long, we've been checking out 3D televisions. Yes. Why? Because we can. Oh. There's only one way to make a Panasonic plasma look better than it already does, and that's by making it 3D. Put on the included LCD shutter glasses and watch as your media comes alive with a stunning 5 million to 1 native contrast ratio. Plus, VieraCast lets you stream Netflix or Pandora and the 600 hertz refresh rate provides detailed motion clarity. Enter the final dimension of television for 2,500 bucks. All right, we had a 3D Samsung yesterday, and mm -hmm. this one right here it isn't quite as sleek, uh, but it does have almost twice the inputs. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them are on the back, so it will be harder to, to wall mount. Uh, but then they did add some on, on the side as well, so that's good. It is about three and a half inches thick, plain gray and black finish. Do you think the, the design trade-offs are worth the, the more inputs? Yeah, I think so. I mean, look, if you're wall mounting a TV at this point, um, you're probably going to run conduit for your you, inputs you anyways. You don't wall mount, right? Like you... No, I don't. I buy giant TVs that my wall is too small for. Um, He's but, not lying. But on the side of the TV... It has to be on the ground because it'll break the wall. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my house would crumble. But um, on you the side of the, the TV, a wall, they give you TV. two USB ports. You've got dedicated channel and volume controls, SD card input, etc. So uh, I, I think picture. the design is fine. Yeah, it looks great. Okay, so the, uh, the 3D uh, on the Samsung yesterday we saw, uh, there was a good amount of ghosting mm -hmm. or you know, crosstalk. What do you think about the Panasonic? Um, it's worlds better. We immediately noticed a difference mm -hmm. in that there was little to no crosstalk. And, and it's the way 3D is supposed to look. Um, we also didn't have to warm up the TV for 45 minutes. Uh, or... But that's the most fun, you know? You get to do that as a family. Yeah. Well, it's, it builds the anticipation to mm -hmm. watch Monsters vs. Aliens, yeah. which is what's sorely missing from the film. Um, you don't have to actually adjust any special 3D settings. Like, right off the bat, things look good. Um, and the reason 3D looks so much better on a plasma as opposed to an LCD is because of the faster response times and refresh rates. Um, that means the images are rendered quicker, uh, they refresh quicker, so they don't leave a, a sort of ghost image yeah, of themselves behind. The and plus, look at how stylish this eyewear is. I mean... And also, 
and here's the thing is, I, I love just adding more crap to my coffee table. Right. Like eight remotes and these. But now you could be like gay cyclops at a Euro disco. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, 3D? I actually, I want to point out, I do, I, these glasses are, I mean, I, I've, I've worn a lot of different 3D goggles in the last few months to try out all these technologies. These are some of the worst, unfortunately. But... At least the TV's good. I'll give them that. I'll give them that. Okay. Uh, well, Panasonic has their own VeraCast service that gives you access to YouTube, Netflix, a bunch the of other internet apps. best of Meredith. Apps. It's not v- Meredith Vieira, Kevin. Great. <laughs> no, it's, it's a VeraCast. It's for the Netflix. VeraCast, uh, yes. It's for streaming apps yes, and widgets all and stuff. stuff. Uh, oh, it works okay. okay. It works okay. Uh, that's the thing. Um, and also, do people want it, right? Yeah, I don't think people are, st- uh, you know, eventually, yes, widgets and apps on the TV, sure, right now, when not has an such iPhone, a big that's deal. when we're all ready for it. Yeah, it, it, look, it's easy to navigate around. It might slow down a little bit when you're actually using it uh, or, or take a lot of loading time for, for certain data-intensive ones. And, and a lot of the apps like Skype and Twitter are still coming soon. They're not here yet. Overall, not as complete as Samsung's App Store that we saw yesterday, but I don't think that's as big a deal as some people make that out to be. All right. So uh, what do you think about the TV uh, when, you're, when you're not watching Monsters versus Aliens in 3D? Because eventually you have to well, not watch How that dare movie. you? How eventually you have dare to, you? Look, I get it. It's a great movie, but eventually you want to watch yeah. something else. Yeah, right? eventually they might release something else in 3D on Blu-ray, yes. Maybe. Um, but when you're watching standard 2D stuff, it looks really great. Some of the blacks are actually the deepest we've seen. Colors aren't quite Racist. as vivid as yesterday's Samsung. No, just a picture of comments. But they are incredibly accurate, and since it's a plasma, it, it doesn't have the smooth motion feature uh, but fast motion, uh, fast like moving action sequences, they look great. Overall, picture quality is rock solid. Okay, this TV right here, about $1,000 more than mm-hmm. a comparable Panasonic without 3D. Yes. Uh, $2,500, what are we rating it? Four out of five. Oh, yeah. good, good rating. If you absolutely need to buy a 3D television right this minute, you, you got to get your Monsters V Aliens in 3D. Yeah. This is the one to get. I it's say the, uh, you go to the store and put on the glasses and then watch your monsters in 3D yeah. and go home and, and then go money. get some Tylenol and take a breather. Um, it's the best 3D experience on the market right now. One pair of glasses are included. Um, you'll also want to buy a, a 3D uh, Blu-ray player for 400 bucks. On I top of that, give you one. Hey, lonely, yeah. lonely guy who loves 3D so much that he buys the CD. <laughs> you only get one. You, get you know why? Them. Let's not let's not pretend. Let's not waste the other pair. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I didn't say that. Joe Panasonic did. Yeah. <laughs> Joe did say that. Total price is about $2,900 uh, to get the full 3D setup that we sh- kind of showed you yesterday, yes. uh, an extra pair of glasses, the Blu-ray player. So, so same, yeah. same as the Samsung in terms of pricing. Don't when knock you, when you, the TV, Kevin. I'm not knocking on it. I'm, I'm, giving, it, I'm oh. giving it compliments. Yeah. Stay tuned. We turn the charity car wash into a Star Wars themed sexy fest. Yeah. Yeah. Music-based games have been around since the 80s, but nothing tops an arcade-style beat matcher like Chime. Chime is the latest block puzzler available on Xbox Live. It's a lot like a love child between Tetris and Luminous. Your objective? Rotate and place different shapes together to create quads across the board before the time runs out. The bigger the quad, the bigger the score. And multiple quads will earn you multipliers. That sounds easy, right? Well, not really. Everything you do makes music, which is why there's a tune bar that runs across the screen and wipes out your quads as you strive to fill the grid. Each time this happens, your track loop is altered. You can also place pieces to play notes and create quads to trigger a range of song samples, allowing you to literally remix full music tracks by world-famous artists like Moby and Philip Glass. Not only that, more than 60% of Chime's purchase price is donated to charities around the world. So download it now for five bucks or 400 Microsoft points and start playing. Kevin and I got to visit Skywalker Ranch, a place that's harder to get into than Cuba. Yes. So hard. Here's a look at what it takes to animate an episode of The Clone Wars. Nerdgasm, have you will. (laughs) That was terrible. But who cares about the Skywalker Ranch? I know. Somebody definitely messed up because they have let us come on to Skywalker Ranch for a first-hand look at how Lucas Magic is made. Seriously, we can go anywhere. Where are you going to go? There. Located off the grid in Nicasio, California, Skywalker Ranch is spread out over 1,000 acres and has everything, including a hotel, lake, feeder, research library, 
and even an animation studio at adjoining Big Rock Ranch, where George Lucas and his team create Clone Wars, an anime-influenced TV series which depicts the early pre-Dark Side days of Anakin Skywalker. Can you just tell me how you actually make an episode of Clone Wars? How we start every episode is, uh, I have a notebook, I sit oh, down with beautiful. George Lucas, and I basically make notes. And in the case of Boba Fett, which is the big reveal, we sat down and started talking about it one day, and so what here's my first Boba sketch of the young like? Boba Fett, and the story that ensued after it. You can see that these are many shots that will actually appear in the final film. So I do all these sketches, and I give it to the lead designer. It's kind of a, a jumping off point for them on when they do the actual designs, which we can see downstairs at Killian's desk. What we have here is, of course, we're starting with Boba Fett. He's a classic character who's appeared in the films. The good thing was there was a lot of reference, and we had to decide how much did we want him, even as a bad guy, to look like the Boba Fett everyone knows in Empire Strikes Back. Um, we had to have a more anime style, something that set us apart. And that was very important, especially to George, that we get those kind of lines in. What happens after this phase, after we have all the designs done, is pre which you'll also see, which is our replacement for storyboarding in the Clone Wars process. This is a proprietary software we have, it's, we call it ZViz. What it does is you can see here an entire set location for Clone Wars, just like you'd build a movie set. Um, here we have a ship, Slave One. Down here we have an actor, uh, Boba Fett. We track with him. As he walks down to this position, we could just slide with him. Does George have specific looks and shots that he likes? Absolutely. He always likes to establish something wide, then he'll say, go in, go in. It's very classic style filmmaking. Once we get it fine-tuned, we get ready to ship it overseas. The voice acting comes in, which I know you're both very interested in. Uh, so I wouldn't say day. interested. I'd say that we've asked you many I think, times. I think you guys are pretty interested in us. Once Dave is done with the process, the cameras are pulled out of the scene and they go ahead and do the animation. So they drop the animation in over the proxy characters that were in there. At that point, we kick off a lighting concept. And this is where we go over every single key part of an episode. We start with a grayscale, so the grayscale that you saw, which mm -hmm. was just the, the layout from the 3D story, we'll go ahead and paint over what we want the lighting to look like. From here, our job is done as far as the visuals are concerned. Then I take it down to Skywalker Sound. What does it really take to make a whole episode? We have two weeks basically to do a whole episode, integrating all the music, the foley, the sound effects, the dialogue. Come and find us. All the creature voices, everything like that. So um, it's just basically myself and David Acord and the Foley team that do the entire show. I, I, oh, that's you, yeah. Oh, yeah. My butt that's is good. making sounds. You're tired. signing with your butt. tired. I like it. This is one of our battle scenes um, from an episode uh, with, that introduces super tanks. So what we thought we would do to illustrate some of the sound effects editing is have you guys do your own sound effects. I get to be a laser? Perfect. Sure. Yeah, I've been working my whole life in this moment. No, I didn't know that. Well, you should. Uh-huh. Always ready. Here ready. Goes. You know, I hate Captain Carrera. He thought like, oh, that's, that's really, that's really good of you to say, and your lips on moving. Oh, so I'm walking, I'm walking. Walking, you deflect and deflect. Nailed it. Nailed it. Let me just end by saying, you're welcome. <laughs> nice. Many, many thanks to Dave for showing us around and really helping to illustrate why sound should be left to the important people who are talented and creative. You know. <laughs> what? Hey, Lucas, Lucas sound is great, but they didn't create sound. That's not... <laughs> You're so stupid. Hey, that's not what I, that's not what I meant. <laughs> created sound. I didn't mean okay. that they created... Of course they didn't create sound. It's, I hate you. G4 recently teamed up with the fine folks of the 501st to raise some money for a children's charity at a car wash. Yes, the 501st, of course, added the storm uh, stormtroopers and whatnot. And what did we add? What, what did we add? Some other stuff. <laughs> Dagobah, there's no car in the galaxy too filthy for the 501st to handle. But when it comes to raising money for this charity car wash, I think it's best to leave the dirty work to the ladies. Here we go. Attack of the Show is raising money for charity the best way we know how. 
by combining our favorite geek pastime with the most scantily clad hotties we could find to wash your car. All in the name of Make-A-Wish Foundation. <laughs> well, we're an all-volunteer organization. We have over 4,000 members spread across about 47 different countries that portray different characters. And basically, we do a lot of charity and community events. And today, we'd like to go and see if we can get 33, 34 cars across at $10 a head and spread a little love for Make-A-Wish. Wow. Of course, it's strong with this one. It's kind of hard to not enjoy beautiful women rubbing down your car uh, while you sit inside and watch. <laughs> oh my goodness, all around me. How are we doing? Well, we're about an hour into it. We've got about seven or eight cars done. I think we're going to have to go ahead and have a little discussion with the layers and get them to step it up a little. Oh, I'll, I'll do it. I'm on top of it. Appreciate it. All right, girls. I hate to say it, but come on. we got to step it up a little bit. Let me see this. This is how it's done, okay? That's how you do it. Oh, that's phenomenal. It's Return to the Jedi. <laughs> that's everything I need. Sometimes you've got to use more than the sponge. Damn! <laughs> Dang it, that's... There you go. That's how you do it. To be a full-time business. Where are we at now? We're about 20 cars, but time's starting to run out. We're, we're close. We're going to have to make a big push towards the end. How did you like your car wash? One of the best car jobs I've ever had. It looks like we didn't exactly get it very clean. You guys might have made it worse. I know what it looked like from the outside. What did it look like from the inside? Uh, very sunny, uh, curvy. Uh, you have the right outfits on. Woo! Yeah, good job, guys. We did it. And how much money did we raise all together? Over $1,000 was raised today. Woo! first. Thank you. And ladies, let's face it, you did a majority of the work here today. Yeah. <laughs> That's it for Attack of the Show's Charity Car Wash. Guys, may the force be with you! Woo! Don't be afraid to get wet. Get dirty. Tomorrow's Warrior is an all-new G4 special that brings viewers the science of modern warfare. Yes, yeah, yeah. Not, not the game. It's actual warfare with real guns and cutting-edge military tactics yeah. and, and weapons yeah. and lots of multiplayer options. I believe the military calls them GATS, Kevin. Oh, sir, my bad. My they're not bad, weapons, yes. they're GATS, yes, they're military GATS. GATS. Yeah. So the Fighting Frontier gets declassified on June 3rd at 8 p.m. Details at g4tv.com slash tomorrow's warrior. Ah. <laughs> That's what I think the sound is. That's like. really good. So stay tuned. AOTS's biggest month of the year rolls on with another Halo Reach Beta Code. Oh. Coming. Plus, it's the free thing so awesome we can't tell you about it yet. So stick around for a brand new epic giveaway. En vivo, G4 presenta El Gigador contra El Nerdo Loco. We'll be right back. Testify! Coming up Monday on an all-new Attack of the Show... Fight Club author Chuck Palahniuk joins us for a first-hand look at his new book, Tell All. Then, on Gadget Prawn, we review Canon's latest Power Shot camera. It's 14.1 megapixels crammed into one tiny package. Then, just in time for the movie, we've got fresh new Iron Man kicks from Nike on sneakerheads. See it Monday. Welcome back to Attack of the Show, everybody. Oh, and have fun pausing that for the code on your DVRs. It's time for another epic giveaway. So yesterday, a very lucky Jedi won a bronzed Darth Vader bust. And the winner is... Davis M. of Shepherd, Michigan. Today's giveaway is the X-Cube gaming PC from Main Gear. It's a compact little powerhouse that has an Intel Core i3 processor. 
an ATI Radeon 5770 video card, a 650 gig hard drive, and 4 gigs of RAM. All of it fits in a case about the size of a shoebox. So how would I win like go. a main gear X cube from Attack of the Show during Epic April? I don't know. Why don't you say so? How like the winner? <laughs> Got it. To win the main gear X cube, visit our website at g4tv.com slash AOTS and click the Epic giveaway link. Get your entry in between now and May 3rd by 3 p.m. Eastern and we'll announce the winner on Monday's show. Holy hell! Or you die. Oh, you should be good with the word. <laughs> Today, um, I'd like to give you an epic fail. Oh. Okay, yeah. Well, today, apparently, a not-so-great Major League Baseball team gets a not-so-great new theme song from former Creed frontman Scott Staff. Let's play ball, it's game day. We want strikeouts, base hits, double plays. A perfect game, a triple play. Well, now Marlins fans have something else to be sad about. Oh. Yeah. Oh. You seriously fail the theme song. <laughs> fail that theme song. You got a good voice, man. Oh, wow. Yeah. Go to g4d.com slash AOTS for all the things you saw today and I, like, more. Creed makes, like, jars of clay hardcore. Oh. Yeah. I don't know who Creed is. Good. You're a better person for but it. But I know who Jars of Clay are because they introduced me to Jesus. They're so amazing. You love that JC. You and that JC, man. That's you how love my that. life turned around as soon as I found God. Stick around, everybody. Campus PD starts right now. Yay! Good night! Butterfly! Wait a minute. Rainbow. If you look really hard, there's a Halo Reach beta code right now.